Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your holy name, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore, a man shall leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Please pray with me responsibly by half verse, Psalm 26. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. Test me, O Lord, and try me. For your love is before my eyes. I have not sat with the worthless. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. 
I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving. And recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell. And the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners. Nor my life with those who thirst for blood. Whose hands are full of evil plots. And their right hand full of Christ. As for me, I will live with integrity. My foot stands on level ground. In the full assembly, I will bless the Lord. A reading from the book of Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the world's. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere. What are human beings that you are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God from whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. 
Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today our lessons speak of marriage. They infer commitment and fidelity and responsibility, comfort and honor and faithfulness. In Genesis, we began... And we read of the miracles that took place where we find Adam all alone and God says, this just isn't a good thing. We have gotta do something about this. And so God creates the animal kingdom and then brings them species by species to Adam, one at a time to be named. But among all the animals, there's not a suitable partner for Adam. So, God then causes a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and from Adam, God creates Eve. Adam takes one look at Eve, and he says, Hubba Hubba. (laughs) That's Hebrew for this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. (laughs) And if creating Adam and all of the animals, and Eve as well, isn't enough of a miracle, then God joins Adam and Eve together as one flesh in the miracle of marriage. Two become one because of the third. Genesis also speaks to us in another place that God gave humanity stewardship over all the creation that we heard about today putting all things under our responsibility, the beasts of the field and the birds of the air. But back to marriage. In the Gospels, Jesus addresses this miracle of marriage when he says that when God joins two people together, they're no longer two, but one flesh. And what God has joined together, let no one, no one put asunder. Two become one because of the third, because of God. Think about it. Marriage is really a reflection of God. It's a Trinitarian relationship. Two people and God becoming one. Two people in a relationship grounded in love and nourished in love and existing in love, really existing in God because Scripture tells us that God is love. By the way, in the book of Romans, Paul writes and he says to us that you and I, in King James language, we are married to another even to Jesus Christ. We belong to Jesus. Our relationship is that of a marriage relationship. You and I together married with Jesus. Hold on to that thought. 
To quote an old poem that you've probably heard before, a bell isn't a bell till you ring it. A song isn't a song until you sing it. Love isn't put in your heart to stay because love isn't love till you give it away. Love is about giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his son. Jesus, in turn, gave his life for each of us on the cross. And the Spirit gives each of us new life. Love gives. And that's what stewardship is all about, taking what you have and giving, investing and honoring, taking what God has given and walking in love. I really know of no better way to understand marriage than through the lens of stewardship. I mean, the essence of marriage is one of giving. We vow to each other. We vow in marriage to give ourselves to one another. We vow to love and comfort, to honor and keep in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, to be faithful as, we sh as long as we both shall live. We make a choice every day to be faithful stewards to one another in the giving of ourselves to one another. This miracle of marriage occurs when God gives of himself as the third party in the trinity of marriage. Literally, we vow to give ourselves to each other without reserve, to give our very best, taking what God has entrusted to each of us and being stewards with it. We don't belong to ourselves, but to one another. God gives. Love gives. Stewardship gives. This is what the incarnation is all about, stewardship. God giving of himself to redeem what was his, that it would be his once again. And God continues to give because that's God's nature. And we, you and I, continue to receive. We receive new life. We receive Eucharist. We receive forgiveness. And we receive the miracle of marriage, perhaps with one another, but ultimately with Jesus. In the words of Francis of Assisi, it's in giving that we receive. In creation, in marriage, in life, we are given gifts from God and entrusted to be stewards with those gifts. Stewards over what we have been given. And so, in conclusion, Jesus calls each of us to be lovers and givers and to be stewards just as he is. We, each of us, you and I, are created in the image and likeness of God the God who takes on flesh in the incarnation, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The same Jesus who suffered, and carried the cross, was crucified and died. The same Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels, who rose again from the dead, and who is King of kings and Lord of lords. This same Jesus, who at the creation as God fashioned the animals, and took the rib from Adam, who makes two into one, this same Jesus whose image and likeness we are created in, this is the same Jesus who calls us to be lovers and givers and stewards over all we have, that we may be just like him. Stewards of our gifts, time, talent, and yes, money. We are to be lovers and givers, stewards who are responsible, stewards who are faithful, and stewards who are married to one another, married to Jesus Christ. Amen.
standing as able, let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him and all things for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, either silently or aloud. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth. Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another where you are. Good morning. Good morning. The 
It's wonderful to see everyone. Liz is our vestry person of the day. She is smiling under there. <laughs> if you have any questions or comments or want to know what's going on on kind of the business side of the church, Liz would be a perfect person to talk to. Um, she'll be outside greeting people also. Will you? Very good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Debbie. Debbie is, I had to look it up because I said it wrong earlier, our music director. Uh -huh. um, and she is here to do the ministry minute for this week. Good morning. I don't know about you, but in my vacation Bible school days, I memorized Psalm 100, which begins with these words. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with singing. As a poet has said, music unwraps the heart, sings out the prayer, dances the spirit, and opens the soul. The music ministry of St. Philip's is an offering of praise and thanksgiving meant to draw all worships together spiritually and emotionally to each other and God. And I think the emotional part is sometimes what scares people about music. <laughs> music offers praise, thanksgiving, and instruction. It reinforces beliefs and theology, affirms, lifts up, and consoles. The music of the church creates indelible memories for all who worship. The music ministers of St. Philip's, our choir, meet on a weekly basis from September through May in a usual year. We meet on Wednesday evenings to prepare our musical offerings and gifts that elevate and enhance worship. The choir provides choral offerings for Sunday worship and other services such as tenebrae or even song. Reading music is not a requirement, but being open to learn and a love of music and making music with others is. Simply contact me or another choir member and show up at a choir practice to join this joyful ministry. And now I want you to pick up the blue book known as the hymnal, and I want you to turn to page 420, one of my favorites, for a summation of what music ministry means to this musical minister. When in our music God is glorified, and adoration leaves no room for pride, it is as though the whole creation cried, Alleluia. How often, making music, we have found a new dimension in the world of sound as worship moved us to a more profound. Alleluia. So has the church, in liturgy and song, in faith and love, through centuries of wrong, borne witness to the truth in every tongue. Alleluia. And did not Jesus sing a psalm that night when utmost evil strove against the light? Then let us sing for whom he won the fight. Alleluia. Let every instrument be tuned for praise. Let all rejoice who have a voice to raise. And may God give us faith to sing always. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you, Debbie. The choir and music ministers here, that's just one of the many ways you can serve. Um, you can uh, contribute your stewardship time and talent to this parish. You'll hear a different ministry each week for uh, 52 weeks. Coincidentally, we have about 50 ministries. Um, and in the same vein as stewardship, Shannon and Craig, would you like to come up and talk about how you found and are serving at St. Philip's? You want to come up and you can take your masks off.
Good morning. When Craig and I moved here last fall, one of our priorities was to find a church community. We had struggled with this in New Hampshire, and we wanted to be sure that we really focused on this missing piece in our lives. I had a list, because I have lots of lists, and St. Philip's was at the top. Um, we had passed by on visits to the area, and it really checked all of our boxes. It's a beautiful Episcopal church, short drive, um, good website with lots of information, right downtown, um, so it looked like it was gonna be a fit. Um, and so I made a call when I got here, and the person on the other end of that phone was Lorraine Beamer. And she made me so excited about St. Phillips. Her voice over the phone just radiated friendly. And she assured me that yes, in-person services had just started again, and she sent me the link for sign up, which I promptly did, and we made plans to see everyone on Sunday. Um, and a year later, here we are. Even with masks and social distancing, we knew when we first walked in, this was home. And that we could just toss away that list, we'd found our place. Um, we may not have been able to see everyone's faces, but we could see kind and smiling eyes, and we felt like we were welcomed. It was a strange time because so many were still doing digital virtual services at home for safety, and we really had no idea how many people were part of the congregation. Um, and we've just been thrilled to find out this past year, to meet everyone um, and find out that it's such a large and robust, but still personal and small feeling church um, with opportunities for everyone to serve in so many ways. So when we got here, we we became part of the community and we tried to figure out what was the best way for us to serve. And um, we didn't know, we didn't know. And again, Lorraine Beamer uh, <laughs> comes up and suggests and she goes, well, what do you guys think about maybe joining the, the landscaping crew? And anybody doesn't know, we, we come out one Sunday or one Saturday every uh, month and then plus special events like the new mulch out front and stuff. And you get to come and work with your, your friends and uh, fellow church members and really just get into the spirit of giving. It just, and it, and, uh, it feels really nice to do. And um, there are so many different ways to serve in church and that's just the one little way we found. And I'm sure there's other ways we're gonna find in the future and we're more excited to do that sort of thing. But that's just been our experience and how, how we've been able to do it. And, and we're so happy to be here with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon and Craig. Thank you. As Craig just said, uh, if one way doesn't quite fit for you, there are plenty of ways to serve at St. Philip's. So three quick announcements. The first one is welcome if you are visiting. Just a reminder also if you are sitting up in the balcony to stay up there. You're lucky we bring communion to you up there. Um, second, uh, you may have gotten a letter or seen rumors about a letter from the bishop about figuring out how to do the shared cup during communion. If you're like me, that kind of gives you the heebie-jeebies. Um, our leadership, clergy and wardens are going to be meeting this week to try to parse through all of that and figure out what it means. And if it's possible, keeping in mind the safety of everyone gathered here, um, and also the validity of, com of communion. Um, you might have heard the saying, uh, communion in one kind is still valid. It means that even if we're just doing one, just doing the bread, it still counts as communion. Um, so we're gonna try to work through all that and hopefully you'll hear something later this week. Finally, my favorite announcement, tomorrow is Blessing of the Pets at 5.30 on the Labyrinth. Bring any pet you have who wants to and can travel. Uh, if you have a pet that's not transportable, bring a picture, even on your phone. Stuffed animals are even welcome. <laughs> if you have a teddy bear that needs a blessing. Um, Father Eric and I will be out there and blessing uh, any animal of God's creation that comes by. So hopefully we'll see you. And my little dog will definitely be there. He likes the attention. <laughs> Good? Good? Awesome. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heaven and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in the obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by the Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>